I'm Bryce Tomlinson from AHeartToWitness.com, and this is Mind Power. As some of you know, uh, I've been running a Intel Core 2 Duo processor. What you might not know is that I've been running on the 300 watt power supply. So uh, I'm going to replace it with a 630 watt power supply. Now on the back of your computer, your power supply is held in by four hex screws. There, 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 and there. They're not the ones on the outside frame. They're the ones directly surrounding where this power supply is all framed in. So we're going to take these screws. These screws are the same kind of screws that are on the back of these slots back here. And they're kind of universal. They're the same kind of screws that hold your case cover on. We need to make sure we take the power cords out of all the different drives. These little white plastic things, they are sometimes really stubborn. Be real careful, don't bend them at an angle or anything. Don't pull them straight out. You want to pull them all out. So you get the whole power supply. Disconnected. This is my uh, serial ATA adapter. It's an old power supply, so it doesn't have serial ATA support on it, so I had to add an adapter. And then this is the plug for my front case fan. Just watch where you take everything out of. Be real careful to watch every place that you take something out of because you got to put something back there. Right here, you'll see there's a little uh, four prong thing. You press this little tad in on the side to release it. It'll come right up out of your motherboard. On some motherboards, it'll be directly connected to the main portion, which is right here on this motherboard. Again, there's a little side release right here. Press that in. Kind of wiggle it a little bit. But don't rock it too much because you don't want to break your motherboard. Now you can see the whole thing is disconnected now. You want to real carefully pull it out of there so as not to break anything. Do it real slow. You won't have any accidents. Here's our brand new power supply. I have yet to get a good look at it. As you'll see, it's about the same size as the other one. Just a little fancier looking, I guess. On this particular power supply, this is something that I have not seen before. Everything plugs in to the power supply, whereas on the other power supply, it was all a big snake that came out of here. Evidently on this one, everything plugs right into the side of it. Since we already know that uh, the motherboard can sometimes have the separated uh, portion here, we know that this part here goes on the motherboard. So that means that this part here goes on the power supply. This is a PCI Express cable. On this motherboard, there's no special place for a PCI Express power cable. So I expect it's simply powered right off the motherboard. I guess we'll find out. These are our uh, power cables for our disk drives and stuff. You take the one that's not, that doesn't have the tabs on it, and you would plug that into the power supply. We've got one, two, three things that we need to have extra power for. This is serial ATA. Since we have serial ATA cables here, we can actually get rid of this adapter because we don't need it. Now it's going to go in there nice and smooth. Just be real careful. You don't want to break anything. Here's a screw hole. I'm just going to tighten this up with my finger to get it to stay put. There, now I can get that screw in there right. Again, I'm just using the original screws that I pulled out of my other power supply. They're all the same. Now that I've got all four screws, we can tighten them all down. It's just like putting on a tire. You want to tighten them all down until you get them all in. It's going to be pretty tight. I'm going to actually back my uh, disk drive out of here a little bit. This particular Antec has slide in, slide out disk drives. So that 
take advantage of that and make myself a little more room in here. There we go. You feel it click. The serial ATA cable. You can tell, tell the serial ATA cable because it's got this real long skinny, just like a, a peanut butter sandwich. I'm going to plug the serial ATA thing in where it goes. Remember it said serial ATA. So now we find our power for our serial ATA. And it will only plug in one way as well, so right there. Now our hard drive is connected to the power supply. Remember, we're going to plug one of the power cords into peripheral power two, and one of them into peripheral power one. So now we can run both our uh, CD-ROM drives off of this. And you know, this bar right here is generally. Uh, You'll see this on most computers. Uh, you don't want to put it over that because if you do that, then you're going to put the case cover over the top of this and you're going to pinch your cables. So if you don't want to do that. You want to run all your cables in this way. Right here, it's rounded on the top and it's flat on the bottom. It can only fit in here one way. So if you try to put it in upside down, it won't fit. Okay, so it's all the way in there, plugged in real nice. Now, find the other power connector, plug that into the other CD-ROM drive, or the other DVD drive. Now, I can push my CD-ROM drive all the way back into the computer. Now, we still got our floppy drive and our fan. Now, I disconnected this cable from the floppy drive, so on this connector, I'm going to plug one end into this fan. Your fan may be a little different. Some of them will plug right into the motherboard. Some of them will plug into your power supply. Just make sure that you hook up everything that you had hooked up before on your old power supply. Make sure it's all connected to your new power supply. And we have our ribbon cable for our floppy drive. Now on most of the ribbon cables that you connect to your hard drives and such, your ribbon cable will be the red side is to the right. On the floppy drive, the ribbon, the ribbon cable has the red stripe. If you look real close, you can see the red stripe on this. It's closest to the power cable on the left. The floppy drive is kind of unique in that. So we still have to hook up the power to the motherboard. Snap it together. As you see, it's got little arrows that snaps together. Just remember which direction that clip is in. Press that down in there until it snaps. So now our power supply is completely hooked up. And you might want to restrain some of these extra cables hanging around. You see this right here? That's flopping right there on the fan. So you might want to take some zip strips. So we want to twist tie this stuff up and out of the way. You want to have access to your motherboard. You want your CPU to get plenty of air. So in this case, we're just going to take these zip, these uh, twist ties right here, and we'll twist tie that right up there to the chassis so that it's up and out of the way. You want to make sure on your twist ties that you don't use any that have any barren metal. And we're ready to go. Got to plug all our stuff back into here, and we're going to find out if our computer works. Now we got our computer all back together, and now it's the moment of truth. Press the power button. troubleshooted um, my computer and I actually got it working as you can see. The issue that I came across uh, that was the problem was, uh, that, was that I forgot to connect the cables. The little four prong connector and I had a special little spot on the motherboard to be connected up to and I forgot to connect it up so the computer would not power up. But now it is powering up. Now I'm not running an underpowered power supply for this uh, gigantic computer of mine. 